All right, so in this short video, I want to take you through just some of the steps that I went through for this recent picture here. This is of what's called the Low Lighthouse in an area called Burnham-on-Sea in the southwest of the UK. It's very much a what you would call a honeypot location, somewhere that's been photographed thousands of times over the years. Uh, and actually, I've got a question about that right at the very, very end. But there's maybe three things that I want to kind of just cover that I went through in this particular image. So let me just dive into it first of all. So this is the uh, this is the final image here. If I just get rid of the size so, the, so that you can see it just there. But if I take you now to the uh, out of camera or out of phone shot, because I actually did photograph this with my iPhone 15 Pro Max. It was a 60 second long exposure. And you can tell that because of look at the um, how the clouds look. And also if I zoom in, you can see that the water underneath the low lighthouse here is incredibly flat and smooth, as is the sea in the distance here. It was an incoming tide, but this area here was where the sea was. So uh, the things I want to show you, first of all, let's just uh, crop this image. I'm going to go to the crop over on the right hand side. And I'm going to go for, uh, originally it was going to be 16 by 9, but that to me kind of cut out quite a lot of this uh, foreground area here, the sand. I wanted to include some more of that. So I went for 16 by 10, and I need to kind of drag it in so that this low lighthouse is definitely in the center. And I want the horizon line to be just below the lower third, around about there. Now, when I photographed this, I was actually quite close with my phone on the tripod. And because of that, using a wide angle, it's caused just a little bit of distortion in the low lighthouse where it looks as if the top is kind of leaning back. So I need to fix that. And I'll do that within the crop section here where we have transform. And I'm going to go to vertical. And I'm going to drag this to the left hand side. And as I do that, you can see that it kind of shifts the image so that now as like the further I go to the left, the more kind of upright now the low lighthouse is appearing to be. You can see, but before, it's like the legs here are kind of splaying out as you come down from the top. But now if I take the vertical slider, drag it over to the left, it's looking much more upright. So something like that. Obviously, there's a trade-off because now we've twisted the image so much that we've got some empty pixels here. I could maybe send the image over into Photoshop and use generative fill, something like that. But I don't think I really need to do that with here. We've got a scale slider. I'm just going to drag that in just to, to the point that the uh, empty pixels have now disappeared. So, yeah, quite happy with that. That's the uh, the crop that I want. So that was the first thing, really, just to show you how we can fix that distortion in the image. The next thing that I want to do, tell you what we'll do. Let's just go to the edit section, and we'll do the black and white conversion. Uh, the way I did it was using these profiles here. And I've mentioned these in a previous video, these adaptive profiles. You've got adaptive color and adaptive black and white. And I'm going to choose the adaptive black and white. Lightroom analyzes the image. It's not like a generic setting for every single image. It looks at each individual image and applies a profile specific for that. So looking quite good so far, but we do have an amount slider. And I'm going to take that all the way over to the right-hand side. So that, for me, I really do like that black and white conversion just there. And if I press, uh, press the backslash key, we can go before and after, before and after. So I want to make sure that this lighthouse really does contrast in the scene, especially against the sky. So let's just first of all go to the masking and we'll create a sky mask. And as we, you know, have kind of got used to seeing now when we make masks within uh, Lightroom, certainly the sky, we do get it where it overlaps into other areas. We can see, look here, it's coming below the horizon line. We can see that red overlay just onto the lower part here. And we're also seeing it a little bit on the low lighthouse. It is a very easy fix. We just come to the masking section to the right-hand side here where we have the three dots, the ellipsis. Click on that, intersect with mask using, and just choose select sky. You click on that, it sorts out the mask so it's a lot better. So now I've got that, we'll come down to the D haze. And let's just bring back some detail in the sky just there. So now that lighthouse is really starting to contrast against it. We can give a little bit more uh, punch to the sky as well, with adding some clarity. That's going to really kind of help those clouds now start to stand out. So that's that. And now I want to kind of give the lighthouse itself a little bit more punch. So I need to make a mask of that lighthouse. So again, we'll go to the masking section. In fact, before we make a select, uh, mask of that, let's just rename this one here to sky. 
so we know what that is. And we'll just close it down because we don't need those bits open just there. So we'll go to create new mask. And this is where you kind of need to experiment a little bit with the masking because what you choose first might not be the best option. So for example, I know when I did this, first of all, I just thought, well, look, there's one main dominant thing within this picture, one main subject. Let me just choose subject as the new mask. And when I click on that, sure enough, it finds it, but you can see that it's actually got much more included as well, like all these different areas here. And it's quite difficult to get rid of it. Um, you can, obviously, when we've got the mask, we can go to subtract. We could try sky and all sorts of different things. But you could be there longer than you really do need to. So with this, I didn't use the subject mask. I chose another option. So let me just get rid of this one here. Go to the three dots. Delete mask one. And instead, what I went for was objects. So creating a new mask, and we're going for objects. Now, one thing I will say is when you're using Lightroom and you're choosing to use a new mask of objects, just make sure that on the right-hand side in the masking section here, you scroll up to the actual choice of how you can actually select the object. Make sure that one of those at least is highlighted because if it's not, when you bring your cursor over into the image, you're going to see like a little plus sign. So it's kind of like going to the magnifying glass. And whenever you try to use it, your image is going to zoom in and zoom out. And it can be really irritating. So just make sure that one of the object selections here, or selection tools rather, is uh, chosen. So let's have a look. Let's just try and do this. I don't expect this to work with one click. I know it's going to take a little bit of work. But overall, it's going to help me to get a much, much better mask. So what I'll do, try, try first of all. Let's just click and drag down to maybe around about here to see what this does for me, first of all. And it, I mean, wow, yeah, that's done a great job, first of all, especially on the legs here of the actual um, lighthouse. That's worked really well. So now that we've got that, I just need to add to it. So I think now what I'll do is I'll just come back over to the right-hand side. Originally, look, I'm using the uh, rectangular marquee tool kind of thing to use to, to drag out where I want the mask to be. But now I'll dive over to the manual tool here. I can change the size of it using this slider. I can also use the left and right square bracket keys on the keyboard to make it bigger or smaller. And all I need to do now, look, is just manually brush over the legs like so. It'll then analyze it, and it'll pick them up just like that. Fantastic. That's going to save me so much more time rather than trying to remove areas that it inadvertently picked up. So we'll go for something like that. Last one, last leg down here like so and there you go fantastic so that's made a really good selection so let or mask rather so let's just click on fit to come out and then once i was in here little things that i did to this was definitely add in some texture real texture on there that's like micro contrast there bit of clarity on it as well and a little bit of dehaze kind of works really nicely on it so you can see now look, if we go to the masking here let's go to the three dots and rename it and we'll uh, name this one here Lighthouse and close it down. We don't need to see all the little bits in it, but I've got the eye icon here. We can turn that mask off and on, off and on. And we turn the masks off completely. We go there before and after, before and after. Now, with this image here, obviously we've got quite a bit of stuff on the beach itself. It's not what you would call virgin sand. Ideally, it would have been good to be there literally just as the tide was going out. So it's cleaned up all the sand for me because we can see that there are quite a few little tracks here where people have been riding their bikes over it. There's a few little footprints as well, but there is quite a lot of seaweed. So with this location here, had I been there just as the low tide was happening or in high tide was going out and cleaning up the sand, there would still be bits in it. But you can see, look, if I dive to my finished image, Let's just go to, uh, let's go to here. This is uh, kind of like version one of the finished image. Very, very easy to clean up the sand just there. And again, that was just done using the remove tool. You can see all the different, different uh, all the little dots there showing where I've done the brush strokes. Some using the generative AI, some not using the generative AI. But it does a really, really good job. So that was that. But the final image you can see, if I go to this one, was where I've used the lens blur just to add a little bit of blur in the foreground so your eyes are naturally drawn straight to the image. And I've added in my little signature touch, which I like to do with these images here, adding in some uh, seagulls as they're flying by as well. 
So that's just a few things I wanted to point out to you there. First of all, if you're, if you're not using them, those adaptive profiles, definitely, definitely give them a go. Like I said, when we showed, I showed it you earlier, they're not generic. It doesn't just apply it to, a, you know, the same settings to an image. It analyzes the image and applies what it thinks are going to be the best profile, what it will be the best profile for that particular image. Then you've got that amount slider where you can increase it or decrease it. And that's for both color images or images that you choose to be in black and white. You've then got that distortion. If you are using that wide angle there, great to be able to use all those individual sliders to change that distortion and then bring the scaling. We don't always have to use that generative fill. And then really, the, I suppose the main thing to show you here was just, you know, when we are making masks within Lightroom, experiment with different types of masks because, you know, certain ones that you might not think of using will definitely give you um, a better result. That object mask Really, really good. For certain things like that where it's quite intricate, all those little bits in between it, I would definitely have a try of the object mask as well. So I kind of hope that's been useful. Um, oh, yeah, the question I wanted to ask you. I mentioned at the start that this is what you call a honeypot location. Now, personally, I have no problem going out to photograph places that are very well known, have been photographed thousands of times in the past. I've got no problem with that. I am a portrait photographer who's just enjoying doing this kind of stuff. So when I get to find these locations, it's great for me to go out to find them. But what do you think? I've kind of had a bit of a mixed reception to this where people are saying, oh, that one's been photographed so many different times. Go and find somewhere else. But does it really matter? Does it really matter that loads of people have photographed it in the past? Because we're all different, you know, how we position ourselves, how we retouch it, the different times of day that we'll go there. Each image is going to be different and unique to us. So is it really a problem? Let me know what you think in the comments section below. Now, before I go, just to say that no matter if you're a beginner or a seasoned professional, if you like taking photographs, come and join us over in the photography community on school. A welcoming and safe space for photography lovers of all levels of experience and interest to connect, share, inspire, learn and grow together. Here's the link. I've also included it in the description part of this video.